Hey there, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 72. Tech talk number 72. All this knowledge shoved into a podcast and webcast every every other week. Everything you could possibly want to know about the technology of voiceover. We've probably talked about it over and over, and still we have new stuff. And you got stored stuff online tonight. forever to access on YouTube. Where did they uh, on? Yes, uh, <laughs> little updates about some equipment I've seen coming down the pipeline. Most of it's just stuff I've heard about or maybe heard, seen a review of that looks cool. But just thought I would share it with you. There wasn't a whole lot of revolutionary things, just a lot of really interesting new tech. Yeah, but it's just fun to talk about, too. It is. That's my thing. Anyway, time for a voiceover body shop tech talk coming right up. Don't go away. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard. The voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Tech, tech, talk, 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 tech, talk, tech, 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 talk, tech, talk, tech, talk, tech, talk, tech, talk. And why do we have tech talk? Because you guys apparently can't get enough of it. George and I can never get enough of it. We get together. It's like, blah, 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 blah. What about this? What about that? What about, it, it just goes on. But the great thing about tech is it's always moving. That's true. But there's a lot of things that never change. And we're here to help you sort those, that information out. So you're not constantly chasing new things that you don't need to worry about. That's right. But still, our phone rings and our our texts go off and our inbox overflows every week with some of the you know yeah. the same questions, you know, slight little different variations. And yes. the fact of the matter is, is you know, we were talking with David H. Lawrence last week, and we were talking about how you know it shouldn't be difficult. People are intimidated by their home voiceover studio by all the technology. Uh, I got to have this. I got to have that. If you talk to the people who actually understand this, as opposed to guys who are musicians, big recording studio engineers, salespeople, <laughs> salespeople, we won't mention any particular retail outlets out there. Um, it's not difficult and it's, it's getting the right stuff and learning how to use the simple stuff in a simple way that makes you sound great. And, uh, or as I said to somebody in France this week, the idea of a home voiceover studio is to make vous sound like vous. <laughs> I hope they got that. I, I, I they understood it. You know. Okay. Fortunately, it was, it was half French, half English and all that <laughs> stuff, but it was a fun conversation. Anyway, uh, if you need help, if you want to learn how to do this properly, if you already have a home voiceover studio and you've been recording and you've been doing things in a certain way, and perhaps you're not booking as much as you would like, uh, or you're not happy with the sound, which is a whole nother question that we could, we could address. You can, you can talk to George and I, 
I mean, this is this is what we do. There are you know, there are only a handful of people on the planet that truly understand what it is you're doing, where you're doing it. Otherwise, it's people who are like, you know, they, they're experts in one studio, their own. And they everybody's got suggestions. You can go on YouTube. You can see all this stuff. Or you could talk to the guys who actually get what it is that we're doing and keeping it simple so you can press record and do what it is you do and what you've trained to do. And that's be a good voice actor which is a whole nother thing in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to work with one of us, uh, you can work with George. And what do you do? You go over to George, the dot tech. Uh, that's my home on the web. And uh, you can order services through there. Sound check is probably one of the most popular things that I, I, do, I offer and certainly most affordable. Just send in your audio, follow the instructions, and I'll take a listen to your audio and let you know how you're doing, how's the recording quality you're doing, and uh, how's your mic placement. I cannot tell you how many times the first issue and the main problem is simply mic placement. Yeah. They got everything else sorted out and we tell them to put it in the right place and all is well. So you never know, <laughs> sometimes it could be the simplest little thing, but you won't know unless you send in your audio. So get a sound check and if you just need one-on-one -on -one support, you can get that too uh, on that same website in the VO tech support menu dan supplies tech support and a shoulder to cry on as well over <laughs> at the, done that a few times yeah you can find me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com and believe it or not the new website is going to be going up very shortly we've Damn, totally you redesigned beat me to the punch oh, well i i didn't get really complex it's just <laughs> okay, like good. take this move it here boo this yeah. let's update the pictures from 2008. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I know. I, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> and, you know, and rewrite some stuff and, and really update it to 2022. And, uh, you know, we moved the specimen collection cup up top. Mm -hmm. So it'll be easy. You know, when you come to homevoiceoverstudio.com and you're trying to figure out how to submit your audio for me, uh, the specimen collection cup is right there. You click on that, follow the instructions, $25. I will analyze your audio and tell you what's going on in there. And uh, you can do that all over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. You know, and, and to go back to what we were talking about a second ago, the fact of the matter is, and I tell people this all the time, if you're trying to satisfy your own ears, you got to remember, you don't hire you. And if you're trying to be geeky about this and you're trying to geek yourself out to make yourself sound amazing, you're going to sound amazing to you and you're going to be eating ramen noodles. So, uh, <laughs> or, uh, that's right. Or mac and cheese or some of those other things. Anyway, it's time for George's weekly tech update. And he's got some, some voiceover related tech. Take it away. Gadgets, gears, what have you. Um, well, first of all, just get out of the way. There's a new Mac OS update from Monterey. If you're, if you are running a bleeding edge system, like, uh, Dan, I think Dan, you're running Monterey. I have I Monterey. Am on my MacBook Air because it came with Monterey. 12.2 um, just apparently, I mean, it literally said bug fixes. That's really <laughs> all there really oh, is. Right. There's Safari 15, I think, comes with it, and it has a security patch. Remember, the, the most important updates to ever run on your systems, Windows or Mac, are security updates. Always make sure you Gotta are up to date with security updates. Um, the rest, the bug fixes, you know, are recommended. Um, if you're not having any bugs, then maybe hold off until, uh, maybe in a couple of months when they release the next one. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the only thing I've seen, uh, that is real relevant in 12.2 is bug fixes. Um, uh, there, there's some gear out there that I've, I've heard some and sort of some of it I've just heard tell of, um, but I'll run down a few things that look, that look pretty interesting. First of all is I know we're always talking about you don't need to travel and do voiceover, but some of you insist on being available. Maybe some of you, your careers depend on it and others, well, you just go on vacation, but you don't know how to shut your brain down. So you still keep looking for auditions. Here's a microphone from Rode, their newest video mic called the Video Mic Go 2 um, that looks really promising. Um, the thing that's surprising about the package, like it's, of course it's small. We knew it would be small. It's basically 
the very end of this road microphone, like the very tip of it, that's the whole thing, right? That's the whole mic. Um, they've miniaturized it down. Um, they call it a shotgun mic. I, it's hard to say if it truly is a shotgun pickup pattern because it's so physically small, but it is designed to be directional. Um, of course, it was designed to go on a camera. That was its primary goal. But I'll tell you, it's such, it, from what I've heard so far on YouTube videos and things, it sounds so good. You could use this as, at the very least, a travel voiceover mic. I wouldn't probably make it my primary, but it could definitely be a travel voiceover mic because not only does it plug in with the, a mini jack into your camera, but it also has a USB connection that can plug into PC, Mac, or iOS. So it'll, it'll hook in directly. With their little app that comes with it, you can adjust a lot of things. You can adjust the microphone gain. You can turn on and off zero latency monitoring. So if you really, really want to hear yourself in your cans, you can do that. You can plug your headphones right into the side of the little mic and you can hear yourself. Yeah, There's also cool. a high pass filter. Oh, wow. Uh, I think it has two modes, like none, low frequency, high frequency, something like that. And something they carried over from their Rode NTG. Oh, I thought it was right over here in arm's reach. It's not. Their NTG4, they've also added a high boost button. So, because um, what Rode's been doing is they're making their mic sound on the flat side. Not hyped up, not bright, not sizzly. And so if you wanted to give it that high, that shiny condenser, dare I say, TLM-103 sort of sound, when you press that bright button, you'll get more of that kind of a signature. Anyway, $100, it could be the ultimate leave it in your glove box microphone. Yeah, I in saw that in, the, in my email and I, you and I were throwing that one back and forth last week. It's like, hey, I think I'm going to get one of those. Just yeah, I mean, it. it even comes with like a proper suspension mount like a shock mount yeah. which is really really impressive i mean for the the value you're getting it's just it's just they keep upping the ante um of what's what's possible in a small package and speaking of which here's a quick look at it because i forgot Ooh, to do that i meant to do that oh there it is see how tiny it is <laughs> i mean it's hard to tell from that picture but just imagine that the very last part of this microphone the tip of it and that's the whole thing and that right coat shock, shock mount is, uh, is really, really cool. Yeah, very cool. Next up on the agenda, let's take a look. Um, Mackie uh, has, they've been making studio monitor speakers for quite a while now, but they have a new one that I think is kind of interesting for the, for the home voiceover desktop workstation. That's compelling. We're, we're getting more and more into having big monitors and more than one monitor and it's not leaving a whole lot of room on our desks for any kind of monitor speakers or st studio speakers anymore. So um, they are making one now that's called the Stealth Bar, the Mackie CR Stealth Bar. And it's, it's just very, it looks like a little speaker bar, like a home theater speaker bar, a small one. And it's designed to just sit right below your monitor. It's angled so it points up toward your ears. And... Um, well, I'm not looking for anything that's like theater quality here. Just something that will produce the voice that you play back cleanly without any distortion. And I hope that's what it does. I have not gotten to try this one for myself. So this is just sort of a, you know, heads up. This thing exists alert, but it looks very promising. If you don't have a monitor a speaker of any kind yet, and you're looking for something that will play back audio for when you're, you've got fatigue, your ears are tired. You just want to listen back on something else and you don't have the space or the budget for real full-size monitors. $119 for this little stealth bar. Pretty cool. Cool. Um, another piece of cool tech, not so relevant to maybe a lot of the voice actors out there, but still I had to bring it up because I was just like, whoa, this is awesome. Uh, Rode, the Rode VRC-01 Aerocaster. Lots of casting devices nowadays. Um, Wonder why. Aerocaster. Yeah, um, it's it's a three hundred dollar device that kind of takes the combination of a, a few different pieces of gear and mashes them into one. So it's a video switcher that takes video from up to four mobile devices, so that you can just set them up. So you have one iPhone for this shot, and you can have another one over here for a wide shot, or one for the guest, and then it takes all those wirelessly into a little switcher that lets you switch them. 
It also has two proper uh, balanced microphone preamp inputs with phantom power for actual studio mics. And it ties all that in and plugs it into your computer. Like, and your computer just looks at it as, as a webcam. So whatever you're running, whether it's Zoom, Streaming Yard, like we're using, or something else to stream video, it, it just shows up as a device. So these, this technology has gotten so much better and so much easier to step up your, your capabilities. If, you're, if you are one of us that watch the show who actually is dabbling in streaming yourself, this is a really, really cool piece of gear. I would check into it. Um, well, last little thing is a little reminder because I already had to remind myself that this feature even exists and that's called Sidecar. The other day I plugged my iPad in. I use my iPad as a, um, a sort of now a dedicated mixer controller. It just sits there next to me running mm. the user interface for um, the Revelator. So where I used to have my Rodecaster Pro, I have an iPad sitting there. And the other day I had to plug it in and charge it. So I plugged it into the lightning cord and all of a sudden I realized that on my Mac, I can now make it another display. And this is called Sidecar. It's been around for, I think, more than a year. But I've just been playing around with it and it's really cool. It basically turns your iPad, if it doesn't have any other jobs, like mine already does, it gives it another job. And that is to be a secondary, tertiary, or quartenary. Is that a word? <laughs> another display <laughs> that you can extend to your desktop. So if you've got that thing, you always want to be able to see, maybe it's your calendar. Maybe you always want to just know what's going on next, or it's something else you want to have access to from your mouse. You can slide it over to your iPad. Like it's another monitor. You still use it with your, um, you still use it with your, your, your mouse, your trackpad or whatever you use. And it's just another display. Um, and it just seems to work. You know, as Apple things do, there'll be like a feature you didn't realize was there. You forgot about it. And then one day, just like me, you stumble on that feature, realize it's there and you go, wow, they really thought about that. That's so easy. <laughs> so I, I had uh, hats off to the sidecar feature. I don't know what model iPad you have to have. I think it has to be at least an iPad. Mm, I want to say five or six. So if you have a real old one in the drawer, it may not work. I have an iPad 7, a couple years old. I mean, you can buy these for probably 200 bucks or less used, and uh, it's a really useful little gadget. Yeah, I got so. iPads piling up. Well, there's there's more uses <laughs> for them. You could have one that's just dedicated to one, you know, one task or one screen that just is always Heck, there. I've got an iPhone on my radio here. That's my music player for all my radios. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's, old meets new right there in one It's bag. not that old. It's you know, the last generation, but we got new phones. No, I mean, the so radios like, are the old part. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, not not the way I make them. You know, not the way I fix them. <laughs> they sound like new. If so it was cool. 1948. Well, that's um, my tech update. Dan, <laughs> what's your discussion topic of the week? Does it have to do with levels? Again? Yes, it has to do with levels because you and I get, you know, we get emails all week long. And usually it's yeah. someone saying, I got these little squiggles for waveforms. I mean, what's going on? You know, so uh, allow me to uh, demonstrate here. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to share my screen here. How do I do that? I hit the share button and share screen and share this piece. All right. Can you see that? Here we go. Okay. Can you see audacity here? Not yet. I think it hasn't uh, taken the shot yet or something like that. Okay. I have to share. Okay. Entire screen, window, this guy, share. Boom. Boom. There it goes. There it is. All right. Uh, so when you're recording, a lot of people just, you know, they hit record. I'll use Audacity since all you guys are using Audacity if you're just starting out. And uh, record. By the way, you can expand on this. And you get a little tiny waveform like that. You guys can probably hardly. Yeah, you drop down a lot, at least 20 dB. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because it's supposed to sound like that. It's supposed to look like that. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons why you're getting low levels. So we'll just stop that. Stop sharing. Yeah, no, no. Okay, whatever. Okay, we're back. 
Why is that? And it's usually something you've done if it's different from the last time you did it. And a lot of times it can be a setting more than anything else. How many times has it been because somebody has a pad engaged, you know, and I'll look at it and I'll go, Do you, is there a pad in you? What mic are you using? Sometimes they might be using um, uh, an AT2035, uh, 20, which has a high, uh, a high pass or a, a, a 10 dB pad on it. Uh, other mics do with it. See, now I was going to go grab mine, but you beat me to it. Then if you get that right up to the camera and show people where that button is, it's a, if you see anything that says 10 dB pad, that's the one. That's right the there. 10 dB pad right there. If yeah. you have something that says 10 dB pad, don't turn it on unless you're a rock star. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the idea, what that does, into it. I know, what it does is it makes your microphone less sensitive by 10 dB of gain, meaning you got to really crank it to do that. Now, last, you know, I got, I got an email this week from somebody. Let me show you this one uh, because they were using a... Uh, Share screen, share window, share this guy. Okay. They were using the AGO3. The AGO3, it's a great unit, and it, it has a pad on it right there. And if you click that in, suddenly your microphone is also less sensitive by 10 dB. So you've got to pay attention to these things. How many times have we... You know, have we worked with somebody and stop the share, stop the share, stop screen. There we go. Uh, George, where'd you go? I'm here. I'm just trying to fix my other camera. Sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway. So, all right. Just single shot of me until George figures that out. There we go. <laughs> um, so the thing is, is you've got to look for these little things. And I, I know, you know, Mark Cashman would call me in the middle of the night, uh, you know, because I was back east and it would be like 10 o'clock here or nine o'clock. And of course it'd be midnight. I'm like, what do you want? And, you know, the cleaning lady came and made sure and, and did something. And now everything's messed up on my, you know, what did, what did she do? And I'm like, let me look at the settings. Yeah. 10 dB pad was engaged. The compressor had been changed. The dial, you know, somebody's dusting and suddenly they're turning the dial and, Usually, if everything was working and then it's not, it's generally something physical that you've done that you don't realize that you've done. Pressing the wrong button or something like I just on did. your microphone, like like <laughs> George just did. Just, just so life imitates art here. Uh, yes, that's right. Absolutely. So yeah, I, it, if you're if you're really frustrated by that, because not that I don't mind hearing from you and saying there's something wrong with my audio. It's usually a simple fix, uh, and that's usually what it is. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's amazing how I, I've been using photography as an acron an, uh, an acronym analogy, an analogy, analogy because that works. We are so spoiled by these devices that are so brilliant through computational photography, AI, et cetera, et cetera, learning engines, blah 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 that these things can take an amazing photo if you can hold your hand still long enough. You can get an amazing photo with an iPhone, right? The, the, there's so much that goes into getting a great photo. That same technology, we are still way behind with audio recording, you know? I think, and I think a lot of folks just don't know that they, they assume that, well, if I'm buying the newest mic, doesn't it just do that for you? And that's a reasonable assumption, I think. But if you're buying professional gear that plugs in to it, a professional audio interface, it's likely not going to have those kinds of features. And you do have to learn some basics. And uh, so don't assume that it's plug and play. You can necessarily get a level, but you need to know how to make adjustments to those levels. It's, you, you just, it's not complicated. Just a little bit of knowledge will get you a long way. So never hesitate to ask someone that you that you really respect or text like Dan and I to get the right advice who you should respect <laughs> well you must be so. because you're watching this show if you're watching so. us yeah well and we appreciate that respect uh yeah uh, levels are something that we, we you know we're always talking about but we're always talking about it because we have to 
<laughs> right. That's because the bottom line. We wouldn't because keep mentioning it if it didn't. It's keep item number out. three on my on my you know my hierarchy of uh, of good voice over uh, home studio sound. You know, acoustics, yeah. mic technique, which we've already talked about, and number three is setting proper levels. And uh, you know, if you're if you're not getting enough gain out of your interface, and it's a good interface, and you've got a good mic. It's not the interface in the mic. It's something you've set. And remember, look at the VU meter. Again, we used to use this guy. We don't use these anymore, but it's still the same thing. Now we do it by, by colors. Look at the meter on your input. Always in the green, always in the yellow. If you're in audacity, into the orange a little bit. But if it's just green, it's not loud enough. If it's green and yellow, it's probably okay. But you got to have a little bit of hard, hard modulation in there uh, over minus six up to minus three uh, for it to be the way it's supposed to be. And uh, we can't tell you that enough. And apparently for the next, you know, until we do Tech Talk number 172, we're going to keep telling you that because that's the most important thing you got to know, at least out of the three. You know, so it, you know, no, mm -hmm. noise, no noise coming in, no reflections, proper mic technique, setting your levels green yellow with a little bit of red every now and again already we got a ton of questions tonight gotta love it so we're going to get to those we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back here on voiceover body shop with the answers to your questions right after this don't go away this is the latin lover narrator from jane the virgin anthony mendez and you're enjoying dan and george on the voiceover body shop VoiceOverEssentials.com is happy to announce our VO Recording Sign winner. Who had the most creative use for the color codes? Benjamin Britton. And here's his entry. Green, currently taking a break. Feel free to wail, babble, yodel, and just get all that noise out. Blue, currently shaking my head while editing. Well, we need to redo that take. Red, currently embarrassing myself. Please no eavesdropping and keep the noise to a minimum. Yellow, talking to a client. I'm trying hard to convince them that I'm the one they want to hire for this gig. Shh, please. Purple, currently recording with live direction from the client. Now is definitely not the time to yodel. Please wait until the sign is green. Congrats, Ben. In other news, VoiceOver Essentials has the equally exciting new version of the fabulous MicPort Pro 3.0 with a limiter. With the next generation of the MicPort Pro, Centrance raised the bar on portable recording. The new MicPort Pro has a built-in rechargeable battery and records to phones and tablets, in addition to laptops and desktop computers. With a host of professional features, MicPort Pro is versatile, easy to use, and travel-friendly. Get it now at voiceoveressentials.com. Well, it's that time to thank Source Elements because of their long, ongoing support of VOBS. And they've been able to do that because of their development of a tool that has stood the test of time and actually really its use has been has been cemented as a studio tool as the as we've all been forced into our home studios the last two years even more than before and that is source connect and this tool is what the pros love to use to bring your audio the voice actor straight into their systems which are almost always going to be pro tools it, it, it's a plugin in Pro Tools that producers can use. That doesn't mean you need Pro Tools. You do not need Pro Tools as a voice actor or talent to use Source Connect. It's a standalone application. You install it. You get the license set up with the iLock account, which is free. And you now have a system that you can use to connect to studios that produces very high sound quality. And there's another really cool thing that it does that producers that are learning to use this feature love and that's called the cue manager it's always recording you in the background as long as the cue manager is open it's keeping a recording of your voice in the in cache or in memory it's actually storing it in a temporary file on your hard drive and at the end of the session the producer can have that sent to them and now they get the completely unprocessed uncompressed raw audio right from your computer straight into the Pro Tools session. It's really amazing technology. And it's something that I think you should probably be ready to use when your studio gets to that stage of production quality. If you're not sure, get a sound check from me or drop your audio in the specimen cup for Dan. We'll let you know if your audio is at that level, but you need to have a great sounding studio to, to take advantage of it. 
Go over to source-elements.com and get your 15-day free trial. Get up to speed, get comfortable with what it can do, and have that on your list of features and sources, uh, features and accessories and tools on your website. It's going to help you start booking the bigger gigs. Anyway, thanks for listening. Let's get back to your questions right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Diggies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Oops, you caught me. Anyway. Were you waxing your mustache again? Always waxing the mustache. You know, this pandemic has been a, a an absolute disaster for this mustache. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm man. Like, like this all the time and. You know, and it comes out That's true. What, going up and down. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind like of you bad. say, signaling for a left turn. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, with that red background, you look like a Byzantine religious icon. Oh. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I meant anyway. to change it during the break. Thanks for yeah. reminding me. <laughs> All righty. Well, it is time for George's and I favorite part of this show. We wait every two weeks just for the opportunity to answer your questions. And we get to start off. And the first one comes from Tammy Anderson, who wrote in. If you write in, that gets priority. If you mm -hmm. actually email. write us an email, yeah. we get to start. She goes, I'm looking to get an additional mic for my female tenor alto voice. Hmm. All right. That's tenor alto. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. Do, do, are women described as tenors? Not that I can remember. There's if sopranos. you're deep enough, I guess uh, contra alto. All right, whatever. I can't even read music. What do I care? Uh, I, <laughs> I I use a Windows 10 PC. My current mic is a Rode NT2A Self Noise 8 dB. That's fine. Okay. Considering an AT4050 Self Noise 17 dB or a Lewitt LCT440 Self Noise, the Lewitt, of course, has probably one of the lowest of uh, yeah, self noise known for that. all of those mics the self noise is irrelevant uh they're all really really quiet and they're they're all great mics will the self noise be an issue with my noise floor not if you're you know, over driving your mic i guess well yeah i mean if your noise of your studio is a problem if your noise if the noise of your studio is loud enough that you can't hear the noise floor of the mic then you're not worried about the noise from the floor of the mic. mic. Yeah. You're worried about the noise of your studio. <laughs> so if your studio is really quiet, then you might hear the difference in noise floor between that, the, say, the 4050 and the 440 Lewitt. Um, but that's only if you had the gain really high, like way high on your interface. So right. it's not likely you're going to notice the difference. The thing is, you never talk about why you don't like the Rode NT2A. You're, you're shopping for mics, but we don't know why. I mean, right. what is what is the Rode NT2A not doing that uh, that you need it to do? Because right. you know, people talk about I need a, my voice is in this range, and I'm like, well, the microphone here is from way down, down here, here to way way up here. Your <laughs> voice is in a little right. window in here. Believe twenty me, hertz to 20, 20, hertz. Our voice fits right. in there, and all these mics carry that. The mics don't differ all that much in the low mid range range. They really seem to differ the most in the upper mid range to treble range. That's where they see the character of the different microphones starts to come out. The the responses have little. Some of them have a rising response that have more treble. 
Some of them have a little bit of a weird curve or a bump in the response, but um, I don't think there's probably anything wrong with the mic you already have, unless there is, and we haven't heard it, so we don't know. Um, and you're also planning to get a re revelator that I'm the same thing I'm using here, and you currently have the Focus Right Scarlet Solo, and I have a homemade double walled studio with sound insulation and record with Audacity. Okay. It really comes down to we gotta hear it. Yeah. You know, and again, as I said at the top of the show, you know, if you're trying to satisfy your own ears with all this technology, you're saying, well, this is what's going to, I'm going to sound best on. You may not know what's going to, what's going to sound best to you. Uh, yeah. and so it's important that you let somebody who actually knows what it's supposed to sound like, listen to it. And that the old be whistle, like. whistle, what it's, what's supposed, it's supposed to sound, to sound like. like. Yeah. So, um, but perhaps yeah, to upgrade from a, a scarlet to a revelator. Um, I don't know if there's a, you know, I don't know which Scarlet you have. The Gen 3 is is really quite good. What you're going to gain with the Revelator is something you're going to lose, right? So you gain functionality. You lose the extremely simple operation of the Scarlet, right? You The Scarlet has one knob for gain, one switch for phantom power, one knob for your head. You know, it's got, it's very simple. The Revelator isn't. It's it's a lot more complicated to to operate, um, so that's what you lose. Um, sound quality difference. I don't think you could probably find a true difference in quality between those two pieces of gear. It's just more more power comes more responsibility. I guess is the best way to put it. And the and the more you got, the more it can go wrong with it. And the more you, you if you're going to get something with a lot of features, you have to understand what those features are and how to use them. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a lot of money for stuff you're never going to use or you're going to use improperly. And, yeah. uh, oh, it, it looks like there's a follow-up. The point of the extra mic is really just an extra mic, a backup. Backup, yeah. Um, I, I, I guess between those two mics, since you're picking two very, very different mics, the 4050 is a multi-pattern mic, the 440 isn't. Um, I, would, I would probably pick the cleaner, the newer, quieter mic of the two. I'd probably pick the Lewitt. Um, there's so many other mics out there. Yeah. The 4050, again, multi-pattern. So it has a whole different set of tools available to you, but do you need them? So I think we need to hear it first. Your audience. Yes. Yes. Let's, let's hear the difference. And the fact of the matter is, is nobody can tell what mic you're using unless it's a really crappy one. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> unless there's something out of whack, really noisy, distorted, or sounds funky. They're right. not going to call you out for having a cheap, whatever mic it is. They're not exactly. going to. Exactly. Uh, Jeff Holman asks, last time you guys discussed pixelation on 4K monitors that are too big for a desk, you both said you love the 27-inch 4K monitors you have, and the 55-inch is a little too big. Eh. Since I have an M1 MacBook Air and can only add one monitor unless I use Sidecar, I want to be the biggest, I want it to be the biggest it can be without pixelation. 4K, 4K seems like the sweet spot for price. So is a 32 inch too big for a desk, uh, and a little more than arm's length? Where do you think the sweet spot for size is? Ask mm. your optometrist because we all see differently. It definitely and, starts there. How's and, your eyesight? And, and how big is your desk? Yeah. How's your eyesight? I, I, so I'm using a 27 inch screen right in front of me and let's see. Yeah, it's about arm's length. If I put my arms fully out, I can Mine, just touch mine's the Mine's a little further. Mine's more like about a yard. Okay. Yeah, so that's part of it. And then also, I do recommend a 4K screen. Absolutely recommend it. Um, because you have a lot more flexibility as to how big you see things. So if you're, as, as you age, your eyesight, you, know, you need things to be a little larger to make them out sharply you have that ability to, to scale up and make images larger. But if you want to do some, something complex, if you want to do some kind of production and you want to see a lot at once, a 4K screen will also allow you to do that. And now, yes, everything on the screen is going to be tiny. Um, you can choose to make everything on the screen very small indeed, but then you can squeeze a lot more onto the screen. So it depends on, on your eyesight, what you're planning to do. But I run mine at like, well, actually, if you go into the Apple menu, you go to system preferences, you go to displays, and then you get um, resolution default for display, or there's another option, scaled. And you'll see there's larger text, 
on the left side, <laughs> and there's, little and there's more space on the I, other side. I've had to take out the loop with the, when I when I said it like that. If but, you put yeah. it on the last to the right setting, more space, that's where you get to squeeze a lot on the screen, but you have to look at it <laughs> really so like, close. You got to really get up on it because everything gets super tight. Okay, so to answer the question, I think either 27-inch or 32-inch is going to be good for you. Um, go to, I guess, Best Buy, for lack of a better idea, and look at some monitors and see. But I'm using the LG 4K 27-inch screen. I think it was like a $300-ish monitor. and it's, I think we're using the exact same monitor. I'm extremely happy with it. I have an yeah. older 1080p HP display, which is one of my original ones. That's just because I do a lot of multitasking. Like during the show, I've got other stuff over here. So I do use that display, but if you only have one, a 32 inch is probably awesome. And you'll, I think you'll be extremely happy. Yeah, it's working for me. All right. You've got the next question from Mike Max Goldberg. Uh, what are your feelings on base traps in the corners of an eight by six foot ish parallel walled booth? Is it necessary? It depends. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think so. That's a, that's a relatively small, it's a big booth as booths go but it's still a pretty small room. So you likely are going to need some kind of base trapping to control the low end in that room. Um, so I would say it's a good idea. You could also just go with very thick panels on the walls that have a good low end control, four inch thick rock wool or something like that. Um, that will probably do everything you need to do. But if you have a deep, deep voice, then you will and make that low end of that booth still, you'll still energize the low end of the booth. Yeah. I love the ATS acoustics bass traps. If you've got a room that big, you've got room to sacrifice two corners to these big ATS corner bass traps, and they work. They really work. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, those things are an instant fix. Right. Um, of course, I the really question he, he says, necessary? It yeah, I, I, we don't know your voice. We you haven't gotta heard hear, you. Hear the booth. Yeah, we don't know. Are you, is your room ringing with your voice? If your voice is up in this register and that's the deepest you ever get, then you're probably not a problem. Yeah. But uh, if you're down an octave below that, down in the basement, yeah, right. you're probably going to ring that room. I go into people's booths all the time. I don't have a super deep voice, but I'll go, mm, 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 I'll just keep making noise until I get the room <laughs> to start ringing you know and if i can't get the room to ring and resonate that's a really good sounding studio yeah <laughs> I, I it's probably one of the most fun things i think for someone when we'd go do a house call or something and we're we're doing that kind of stuff one two one two one two okay and they're all like looking at us like that and i'm like <laughs> like i can hear okay there's this ringing here and that sort of thing you know and and that's that really is the uh you know the the, the ring of truth there Mm -hmm. Of course, I find that people who ha who tend to have a really deep voice, they may also be over projecting, and mm, yeah. you know, and the louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room come into play. Right. So, inside voice. Use your inside voice when you're doing voices. Mm. Most important thing. Yeah. Uh, Theodore J. Medsa from YouTube says. What audio interface preamp would you guys recommend at about two hundred dollars or lower? All sorts. There's uh, so many. There are so many, and and as we were saying earlier, as we were talking about the um, uh, the Personas, or the Personas Revelator, the, the Revelator for yeah, you know, all the all these things. The more stuff it has, the more stuff that you're not going to use. Uh, you don't get the equipment for all its features. You get the equipment. So it does the basics of what you need done. Mm -hmm. And so you don't go hog wild. Uh, and at $200, $150 to $200, you got lots of choices. It's the under $150 that you want to avoid. Uh, I mean, the, the, yeah, the focus I rights. I guess the Scarlet Solo is around that price. Maybe a little uh, less. It's 119 now. It's 119 Yeah. So and, that, one's, uh, that one's okay. The Gen 3 is a good one of the yeah, Scarlet, yeah. right? Yeah, all all the Scarlets, the two I two, the two I four. Because unless you're using a MIDI, why would you go anywhere besides a two I two or a solo? Uh, but you know there are a lot of other good ones as well. Uh, the um, 
Steinberg UR. St- the Steinberg series. UR. We were just talking about the, the Yamaha AG03 and the AG06. Some people have had good success with the um, uh, audience equipment. I've had mixed success with audience stuff. Um, their sound quality is fantastic. The ID4 is really, really, really good for the price. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the uh, what else am I thinking about? The Motu, another one of those that looks awesome on paper. Some people say it's awesome, and I've had too many clients with weird behavior of their Motu M3 or M- M2 or M4. So, you know, there's some things I'm not going to recommend, not because they have great features or they don't have great features, or they don't have great sound quality, just that I've had enough people say, I had an issue to make me shy away, you know? Right. So some I'm not going to recommend because of, because of that. So right. yeah. if you can anyway. stretch your budget a little bit, the SSL two, two. Yeah. is Which a is really what? nice one. How 229 much? usually. 229. I've seen them for 200. Yeah. Yeah. If you a see lot of for, people using those, you know, nice yeah. quiet gain of really simple interface. So easy to use. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Just simple to operate. Very clear controls. Very easy to access yeah yeah so we have to call the people at sound logic and (laughs) say hey you want to sponsor our show we just gave you a big ad right there (laughs) yeah no all all of those preamps and interfaces between you know 200 150 and 200 even up to 220 you can't go wrong you start going more expensive and you're not going to notice the difference you know you can say i got this really expensive interface but it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. I, I have a client who has a, an Apogee Symphony desktop. This is a $1,500 interface. It's like a rack mount thing, isn't it? She has spent two weeks locked in, you know, a source, uh, locked in a tech support thread with, with Apogee, and it doesn't work right. Yeah. She's outside of the return window with the dealer. Guitar Center won't take it back. She's stuck in this purgatory. So it doesn't matter what you paid for it, the reputation of the company. Sometimes the most complicated high end gear is just going to cause pain. Yep. So hours of mind numbing frustration. Yeah. All right. You get the Tony Hoover question. Okay. Um, is that a decoupler from the hook studios on your boom? It is indeed. So how do you like it? Well, this one's an, this one was a prototype. It's actually coming apart a little bit right there. Mine already did. I've had it for a long time. Dan and I each had prototypes of them. He was giving them. How do I like it? Uh, my Again, if it, as long as the final version that he has doesn't ever start separating like this, um, I think it's awesome because it's a lot more compact than a big giant spider shock mount that takes up a lot more space. And I just happened to have it, so I threw it on my arm, boom arm. Beating on the boom arm there, it's, it's definitely damping things if i tap on the mic itself versus the arm it definitely absorbs quite a bit of of of, it definitely absorbs quite a bit of thumping and low frequency noise so i mean i'd have to say i like it it works yeah Yeah. i I think that the, the, the the question comes up is how do you have the mic mounted uh and you know do you have it on a boom stand that is connected to your desk or connected to the wall. This particular boom arm is connected to the wall. Yeah, so if you bank, if you bump into your desk, you don't get any... Nothing. No, you don't get any transmission here, of noise at all. Then you're going to get something on there. Right. So I, I always tell people, look, if you're going to, you know, do something like that, and even, you know, this, this shock mount is only as good as where you put the mic stand. Uh, yeah, because I've seen, you know, if you put it on your desk and you've got your computer on your desk, even if it's, you know, it still has a mechanical or hard an ex- drive, external hard drives yeah. or an external Oof. hard. Oh man, those things Calming just and vibrating. generate all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, the, yeah, it's okay. You know, but better to get the spider. It's a lot easier to use and, you know. Let's, let's see if he, has he improved it? Is he still making those? We don't even know. Well, I, I, somebody asked, they recognized it, knew what it was and knew what to ask. So either they'd seen it. I don't know where you saw it. Cause I don't know where to get it. I guess the hookstudios.com is probably where he's still. Yeah. We, still they just show up them. in our mailbox somehow. And <laughs> we've, we've known Mike French for a long time. He, he made prototype products that we got to demonstrate and test out. And, uh, he, he's a good guy. We love that. They're, they're still made as far as we know totally by hand here in los angeles yeah that's kind of cool 
Yeah. Mike Max Goldberg. How does one go about sending a booth review dry demo? I'm so glad you asked that question because George and I talked about that at the top of the show. Um, we both have places to do that. Uh, George has his, what do you call yours? Soundcheck. Soundcheck. Great name. Uh, I have my <laughs> specimen <laughs> collection cup. Uh, over at homevoiceoverstudio.com, uh, and you just click on that or uh, over in George's site. Uh, I charge $25 for an analysis. I will give you a very thorough analysis mm -hmm. uh, of your audio. What I'm really listening for is the acoustics of your room, how you're using your mic, and are your levels right? Because if you're thinking about other stuff, that's distracting you from what you're supposed to be doing, which is looking at copy. Who are you? Who are you talking to? You know, how are you talking to them? Why are you talking to them? And you, you really want to uh, avoid the other problems that you can have. Noise coming yeah. in, reflectivity within your booth, those sorts of things. I'm picky and, about the plosives, too. You know, uh, absolutely. Mic placement. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled yeah, peppers. As you can see, you don't. Want you'll never, that. you'll never hear a plus about it. My mic. Eh, you see a pop screen here. Those no, things just distract you. You know. Yeah, mic mic technique is everything. So we're, we're gonna all those things we're gonna hear when we listen to your sample and give you give you our thoughts about what you need to change or if you're really on par, we'll let you know. Yeah. Within five seconds, we'll know. We pretty yeah yeah, yeah we we've, we've listened to thousands <laughs> and thousands of yeah. files and it's like oh yeah. We know what's going on. Without even mm -hmm. seeing the room, we know exactly what's going on. Okay, you get the, the last question from Theodore J. Mezel. All right. He, has, he says uh, um, he has a 3 by 3 portable vocal booth from Vocal Booth to go. So that's basically a, a tent made out of heavy blanket material on four sides and a roof. Um, what are general tips you could give to optimize the sound in Audacity? Optimize? Um, what I don't do you know mean? what you need to optimize. <laughs> so, like, if if you are in a noisy room, because those they, any of these portable booths don't stop a lot of noise, you may still need to apply things like a high pass filter to take out rumble, low frequency noise. You may have, um, because of the mic you're using and your particular voice, you may be overly sibilant. So maybe you need to reduce some sibilant treble range a little bit. Um, maybe you're not uh, a seasoned voice actor, so your dynamic range is kind of all over the place and you're getting loud and soft. And so a little compression might be helpful. Um, these are all things that depend on all of the aspects of your studio, not just the space, but those, those portable type booths that are surrounding you on basically all sides generally do a really, really good job of getting rid of the room reverb and the room echo and that kind of stuff. They, but they you have to be in a quiet that. room to use But it has to be quiet. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So if we hear noise levels and things that you can't fix with your setup in your room, then we'll, we'll give you tips. And um, another thing I do is I make macros. They're called, they're presets, but in, on Audacity, they call it a macro. And I will build a, an effects chain that will try to adjust certain things in your voice, not your voice, but in the sound quality of your recording to uh, optimize things but uh, it's something that i do by ear and it's not a formula it's just ten thousand hours you know <laughs> as they say of of doing this kind of thing you know yeah. so uh, yeah it's it's amazing what people don't hear they don't realize it and, and we see this every time we get we get a sample from somebody uh is the low frequency rumble or a fan running somewhere and the fact of the matter is, and I've mentioned this before, you probably don't hear it when you're sitting there in your booth because it's always there. Yeah. It's just, you know, George and I were mind. talking about, you know, the fact that because we were broadcast professionals and probably set up feedback loops several times in our careers, uh, we, we have what's called uh, tinnitus, which is that ringing in your ears. Mine somehow is getting louder and I'm noticing it, but for the most part, you know, your brain will say, okay, let's, you know, pay attention if to something lucky, else. Your brain will tune it out for you. Right. Yes. <laughs> so if there's a constant, you know, if there's a, a rumble that it mostly we don't hear that because it's below the range of our hearing, but it shows up on the VU meter. You and, see it very a, well. Yeah. You know, but, but fan noise is generally something you generally won't hear until you stop. It's like your refrigerator. You're sitting there having a cup of coffee in your, in your kitchen and you're like, 
Did my fridge make noise? And then all of a sudden you hear. <laughs> yeah, it does the, the best is when you lose power, right? Right. And you realize how quiet it is all of a sudden. <laughs> you realize exactly. how many damn things in your house make noise. Make noise, yeah. Absolutely. Refrigerator is a big one. Your furnace, all the, little, all the little things that are always making little hums, buzzes, and whirs. When they all go away, it's kind of startling. That's what a professional recording studio sounds like inside. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that quiet. That's what that's why they, they spend tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to get their studios to that point and still having electricity, <laughs> air conditioning, uh, and all of the comforts you need to to enjoy your studio. So that's like, yeah, a whole nother yeah. level. Yeah. Well, as Tom Maliazzi used to say, you've wasted another perfectly good hour um, <laughs> yeah. talking about- Click uh, and clack. <laughs> it's, I miss those guys. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, we love doing this. We love doing it for you guys. And we love, you know, the fact that you, you, you tune in every week and, you know, it, it's great to have your questions and it's great to enlighten you. And uh, we appreciate that. Uh, well, we got uh, a little bit more to talk about, just, just a little bit. We'll be right back after these messages. Thanks so much for your questions and for watching. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S dot TV. Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in, in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, VoiceOver Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in VoiceOver or to change something about your VoiceOver career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, Check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in VoiceOver. If you go to VOHeroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap. And I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. And we're back. I think that I'm voice. On the, I'm, I think we're, <laughs> we're on the clock here. I think we're right where we should be. Uh, anyway. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, next week, another great guest here on this show. Who is it going to be? Why don't you give us some suggestions? Who do you want to hear on the show? Who do you want to see joining us? Eventually we're going to, they're going to be joining us here back in the studio with all of us here, not wearing masks, breathing on each other. Well, maybe not. Can you that. imagine? <laughs> anyway, uh, who are our donors this week? We got quite a few like Rob Ryder. Patty Gibbons, Greg Thomas, Shauna Paynes and Baird. Uh, yes, I Con Productions, our good friend Martha Con, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, uh, Sandra Manweller, Robert Leedham, Antland Productions, Ogle Roy, Shelley Avellino, Thomas Pinto, Brian Page, George A. Whittem, my dad, and Nathan Carlson, Graham Spicer, and Lee Pinney. Because what? 
Yeah. Why? He's, I don't know. <laughs> People, we appreciate the donations, guys. It's, we read it, his name anyway. I, well, he doesn't I, have to give us any money. <laughs> yeah, but he gave us a good donation. So Thanks, I'm, Lee. I'm giving him what a know, mention. Uh, once again, you've got your office hours on Clubhouse. Yeah, if you're if you're a client of ours and you haven't found out how to join it, you send me an email, George at George the dot tech. But it's a, a private Clubhouse for clients only. It's twice a week at 10:30 a.m. Mondays, 4 p.m. Fridays. And it's 30 minutes of just straight up Q and a tech stuff like we do on the show, but this one's special for our clients. Right. So tune yeah. in. Let's thank our sponsors because without them, this would just be a blank screen and you'd be going, why am I looking at a blank screen? <laughs> Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, voheroes.com voice actor websites.com and, and JMC, JMC demos. demos. When quality matters. Our thanks to Jeff Holman. Great job in the chat room tonight. We had lots of questions and lots of comments, and we appreciate you being here and giving us those. Sumerlino, almost perfect <laughs> as usual. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. I was the least perfect of the night tonight. I was the one that had the, the ah, you're blotter. Doing okay. All right. And of course, once again, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Who's I'm actually g- watching? We love you too. Well, yeah, Lee. we love you. Love you, Lee. Come on, <laughs> visit us down here. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, this is not an easy business voiceover. There's so much you got to know. You have to be a good voice actor and you have to have the technology, you have to know how to use it, just not overuse it. But the bottom line is, with if you got it set up right, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Great to see y'all. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you next week with another great show. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye, Mishka. 